Welcome back to Dum Dums and Dragons, where improvisers who've never roleplayed before journey into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the Grand Wizard Bukake, your host. While burying a body, our heroes faced off with Strahd himself. Reginald and not Peter Baelish secretly killed a vampire in a basement. Alan learned that Xanthus is on Team Strahd, and Quinny danced his way out of combat with a burning wolf cow. Can our heroes defeat a vampire lord now that not Peter Baelish is in love with him? Find out next on Dom Doms and Dragons. You hear a scream of anguish uh, from the church uh, as the uh, priest realizes what you've done. Um, Alan, you'd previously wanted to have words with not Pete, uh, but it seems like you guys might need to make some fast tracks now. Um, uh, Isabella and uh, Ismark um, drag the, the coffin kind of in, into the hole and um, uh, sort of like throw some some dirt on it. But the, hearing the scream and also knowing that there are more wolves out there, um, they kind of look at each other and are like, uh, okay, we love you, Dad. Uh, don't come back. May um, uh, uh, Sun Scythe uh, shine down upon you and may the Morning Lord keep you safe. Um, and you can tell that there's clearly like a we'll do a proper ceremony later, but they both just kind of put a hand down on, on the ground, nod to each other and say like, uh, okay, we should probably fucking go. Uh, not Peter had managed to like uh, haul his sorry carcass out of the uh, uh, grave site before they threw the coffin. He was just like, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, like, yeah, I don't know, come on, come on. Uh, uh, considers for a moment getting that hurdy gurdy bag. He's like, no, I'll, I'll come back or I'll just make another one. It's like, that's oh, no, not... I've, I've, I've got it. It's right here. Got it? And he oh. just like takes it off his back. It was under a cape. And he's like, yeah, I, I killed the guy. I could bring you your hurdy gurdy. It's literally one of the nicest things anyone's ever said to me. Thank you. Um, so not he takes a hurdy gurdy and kind of like um, uh, is hustling out of there quickly. Uh, okay, great. Um, Quinny, I assume you're you're running too, or do you stop to sort of? You, you obviously don't know what's happened inside the church. I mean, Quinny's not an idiot. <laughs> um, he's put it together pretty pretty easily. Also, one of the f- like. Physically, the two physically weakest people <laughs> were digging this grave. Kind of like, where did the strong fighters go? Hmm, I wonder. <laughs> uh, it was pretty easy to kind of put it together. Uh, so it was just like, no, yeah, I know, I know what's happening. Uh, and so he's ready to go also. Okay, so I assume you're, you're not going to talk to the priest anymore. You guys are just on your way. I don't think he's going to want to talk to us anymore. <laughs> this is I'm fair. Just, I'm just following like... Guys, like, he's not a threat. Why are we running away as I'm, like, following behind you? <laughs> yeah, we could just explain to him and then maybe find out about this sun god thing that apparently has a scythe. Remember the scythe? He's just yelling from the back of the group because he is hands down the slowest. <laughs> I I'm following the two people who know stuff about the scythe. The people who we just helped. The people who can repay us. Okay. <laughs> so are we definitely out leaving, or? teaming up with Strahd. Um, as you uh, so as you begin to um, rush out of the uh, rush out of the graveyard, um, uh, there's a greenish glow um, that begins to uh, sort of um, uh, erupt from the ground. And as you kind of make it to the gate, uh, you see ghostly figures begin to rise from the graves. Um, and um, uh, Isabella just turns around and looks at them. She's like, oh, shit, the procession's starting. All right, we really got to go. Uh, and as you, you begin to run, um, you see uh, warriors uh, and adventurers and sorcerers um, rise up out of the ground and begin a very determined march um, seemingly towards Castle Ravenloft. Uh, you see all manner of adventurers um, dwarves, uh, Jinsai, Goliaths, goblins, halflings, um, and they all look very determined um, as they, they begin their, their procession. Um, as you kind of move amongst them, um, Isabella quickly explains that uh, these are the ghosts of uh, adventurers past uh, who came to, to try and defeat Strahd, uh, and not Pete amongst them, uh, you see a number of the Vistani you sent. Um, so not all of them, obviously, but a, a few, certainly. 
uh, as these these ghosts begin there, the sort of long processional. So yeah, I'm just like, oh, Stefan, Kyle, oh. Erica, Jormy. <laughs> Uh, uh, and they they don't uh, they don't acknowledge you as as they walk. Um, as you Stefano, uh, sweet Stefano. As you make your way um, away, uh, you hear um, uh, an earth shatteringly loud hurdy gurdy, like all keys smash as though someone has uh, has taken a hammer uh, to it. Um, and moments later, uh, the uh, the church bursts into flame. Um, and uh, together you uh, escape sort of back out uh, as the, the procession winds its way up towards uh, Ravenloft. Uh, you, you exit out of the, um, out the west gate uh, and out of town. So having uh, escaped from Barovia and kind of um, made your way a bit of a distance away, you actually have a moment to catch your breath and take a short rest. Um, the woods are dark on either side. Um, the uh, the night is upon you. Um, Ismark is inclined to just sort of push forward as fast as possible, knowing that uh, Isabella is under threat. Um, but uh, obviously you guys have just been through a bit of an ordeal. So you have a moment to catch your breath and to say anything you need to to each other before you continue on the way. What do you do? Uh, I think when he would check in with um, everybody after that, first fight with with Strahd um he would mention feeling watched for a second time um and um and I think he would also just say guys I I, I can't help but shake the feeling that we're auditioning for something for roles we don't really know about wait for who I don't know. I thought maybe it was just Strahd, but it felt like a different vibe. I mean, we. He said it was like a tester or something like that, too, didn't he? When he summoned those wolves out, he said something along the lines of trying to see something. So, I mean, I think he's auditioning us for something, but I, I feel like there are. There's more, I don't know, wills at play here than just Strahd's. Well, I mean, God, with Xanthus here. I mean, that was Xanthus at the carriage, right? Yeah. Xanthus and Strahd together. I mean, Strahd's Collecting... making friends with all the people oh, we hate. Remember how Xanthus was, like, collecting versions of himself? Yeah. And, like, killing them? Now I he's collecting a... versions of Bryn. Oh, man. Fuck. Oh, man. And not Pete. Yeah. Do you want to, like, have sex with Strahd von Zarovich? <laughs> Whoa, hey, hey, that, what, <laughs> Quinny, what, what, what kind of qu- question is, is have, have sex with, you know, someone that handsome would wa- want to, you know, I mean, I, 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 I do think there's a chance. I mean, <laughs> I, I've got a couple of opinions and feelings about it. Ultimately, you're my friend and I want, I want. You're, I want you to be happy, and I want what's what's best for you. Now, if that means you need to, Are, really, kind of, really, Are we really having this conversation right hear now? Hear me out. Hear me out. Let's really <laughs> let's think take, big picture Quinny. here. Let's think big picture here. Big All picture. right. Huge. We're we're at Probably Castle Ravenloft. We're gonna we run into Merle Streep. Right. She's there, and I get to say, my best friend fucked your husband. Fuck you. It's it's gonna be. It's so important Whoa, wait, to me wait, that this wait, happens. Wait, 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 wait. That's right. Who, who is it important to? And me. Who and else is it important to? Apparently, Quinny, uh, Quinny, yep. as your friend, if me, you know, making passionate, deeply connected love <laughs> to Strahd would help you, my best friend, <laughs> well, that is a bullet that I am... More than willing to bite. I am willing to no, make that sacrifice. No. I will get on my knees for I, that. I cast a mage hand and I just, I I slap not Pete. Ow! And I say, 
get a hold of yourself. <sighs> and then I backhand her with it. And God! I backhand him with it. And I say, <laughs> and that's for the thunder wave. I did see that too. You did thunder wave, Alan. Hey, Quinny, can I talk for you? Talk with you for a second in the woods. Yeah, just one second. I just want to wrap up this conversation here. It's like no, uh, no, I, no, I, I, re- I really a- think we should talk in the woods right before we do this because I think we're going to have to come back and talk about something else. I uh, fine. Yeah, fine. Why can't we just talk right here? I think other people are going to have opinions. That's going to complicate things. I'd rather say what I have to say without well, a group, and then we can come back. Well, now I mean, you've just. You have stoked so much interest in what it is that you want to say to, to Quinny. Not uh, Pete. Like, Not Pete. What? Back down. What? <laughs> Fine. Fair enough. Uh, the two of you disappear into the woods as Alan and Not Pete stand in awkward <laughs> silence, wondering what you're talking about. So, Quinny, yeah, awkward conversation. I know you hate conversations and you hate feedback. Uh, I don't care anymore. You realize you're a terrible king, right? Like one of the worst ones ever. Yeah, that was the truth that I told you way back at the Oasis. Yeah, cool. Because, like, you haven't asked Alan once about Alan's feelings about Bryn being a kidnapping victim. Instead, you danced in the street. And (laughs) your best friend wants to bone our, our, our sworn enemy with, like, a strongly emotional connection. And you're supporting that rather than focusing on defeating Barovia. You don't really seem to have a plan. You don't really give orders. And I've been trying to betray you and make you look like an asshole and an idiot all day. And it's worked every time, and I don't think you were aware of it. And that is like a red flag, because that means you're not capable of being a dictator. And you're not capable of being, like, a benevolent king. So I just want to be clear. You're not my boss anymore. Maybe you can kill me. In which case, I don't know. Kill me. And then good luck with Strahd, because I'm the only vampire hunter you have. Alan's caught up with Xanthus, and not Peter Baelish is literally the most likely to betray you, which is incredible with me on the team, because that should be me nine (laughs) times out of ten. But uh, we either go back as equals, and then I'm going to do what I think is smart, and we'll figure out, you know, why everybody cares about Barovia. But, like, I don't know what's going on. I think you should give up the crown. You can't learn to be a king while you're king. These are just sort of facts. Like, can't help but smile. It's just... And he walks right up to you and gives you, like, a friendly kind of jab in the thigh, I guess. (laughs) Just thinking about scale. (laughs) And he's just like, this is the guy I've been waiting for. I mean, yeah, dude, I've got eyes. I've seen you kind of talking to everyone behind my back and stuff like that. And, I mean, I'm trying to manage a lot of stuff as best as I can, you know. I mean, I feel like time is of the essence, so I'm trying to, you know, soldier on here and and, and, and get us going places. But, yeah, I need my friends to look out for my friends. I mean, this is great. I, I, I'm glad that what I said to you about earning trust while you're wielding it against me is... That's one thing, but you're literally building trust with the rest of the group. You're ingratiating yourself to us, and you're being helpful? Like, this isn't something I could do by myself. You're part of the team. I mean, you're doing it for reasons that, I mean, ultimately, it's not great for me, but... No, man, I never thought I was gonna be a good king or anything. I just needed to talk to you in your fucking weird, perturbed language of threats... And 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 coercion. I didn't think it would work this well. God, I'm... you are really stupid. Um, <laughs> we both cool. are. So dude. we can go back <laughs> for the dum dums, <laughs> and then we can find out what everybody's doing. Because I will tell you, other than the Bryn thing, which Alan didn't seem as worried about as I thought. I actually I know. don't know. <laughs> she doesn't I don't really know why... have a big sister vibe. I don't know why we're here. Other than not Pete, and we didn't even start with that. Bryn is, I can tell you right now, if you want, or do you want to go back to the group and and have a group conversation, like a team? Yeah, I think we might want to do that, because you're you're very bad at leading. (laughs) And that's your opinion, and I'm glad you're telling me, and not doing shit like stealing contracts out of my personal property and signing deals with the devil's mom. What part of you did she take, by the way? I lost an eye with that. Are you a whole person still? As far as I... You obviously didn't negotiate enough. I had to go through some things, and we talked, and 
What did I give up, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Baba Yaga isn't here, dude, so can't tell you. Oh, so you don't oh, know I, what you lost. Oh, man. No, no, no yeah, no, that's, I, I, that's standard I gave up one of my contract law up to a point. <laughs> No, I, I gave up one of my kidneys. It means I lose like the last five years of life, but who cares? I don't need those. She, she did not make that deal. <laughs> you can think <laughs> that's what you did, but that is not the deal you signed. Um, uh, the only condition you got uh, from her was that you killed the one of many faces. Uh, you're not sure oh, I, what else you're beheld to, but um, that was that was her deal. I just got to kill that demon guy. But I want to be clear. The conversation we're having isn't me saying like, yes, I'll be a part of the team and not steal stuff from you. It's me telling you, I'm just going to openly steal stuff from you if I think that's the best move for myself and everyone. And we will all as a group deal with the fallout of that. Um, <laughs> nice. Now, you know, you, I, I, you are part of the group. And, and, and I want you to, to try and think of it that way. You've tethered yourself to us intrinsically by signing into a demonic contract with Baba Yaga. It's not really your choice anymore. Well, I mean, it was your choice and you made it. And you trust me, man, that shit is hard to back out of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my big concern is just that you're so incompetent, you're going to get us all killed before we can kill the demon. Because we keep going up against very big monsters. For example, they were worried about their dad, so we had to march through town and then get attacked. We could have just burned that body. We could have just burned that body to a crisp. This is great. Come on, we're bringing this back to the group. I don't know why you want to pull me aside for this. Let's go. Okay, cool. And we'll go back to the group. I'll be like, you okay, surely we talked. We talked. Quinny is yeah. the worst king ever and should give up his crown. Uh, no one's in time. charge anymore. It's a group effort. Sounds good, right, Alan? Group effort? Uh, uh, I'm yeah, just going mean, to say guess, it's kind of how we've been operating, I, I guess. Yeah, I'm a king because my but, friend died and it was his dying wish. And I mean, someone has to claim the throne of a car. And I'm going to do my best, but I'm not going to be able to do it alone. But, I mean, didn't we hear about some... Some guy being alive or something from another dimension? A lot of that is going around. You got a name? Because I don't remember. Ty, Typho? Ty, 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 Didn't we hear Tyson. something? Uh, yeah, no, he has nothing to Grafus. do with the car, really. Graf- Grayson Typhus. Yeah. You got there. Yeah, that's fine. Just a major villain in our series. It's good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, before we go too far into that, I just wanted to finish that thought that I was having, uh, not Pete. Um, I want you to be happy, but also... Like, it's not that superficial surface level happiness. It's like deep happiness. It's like self-respect, dude. And I know, I've, I've known you for a while, and I know a pretty face goes a long way with you. And I need you to kind of, you need to reconcile with, is that what this is? Or was there like a real connection there? Uh, Remember all those sad ghosts in that procession where you were like, I can't believe they died? Strahd's the one that killed those people and then captured the rest of them. Yeah, I'm just I'm just telling you like if it's not if it's not healthy, I'm going to help you fight this guy tooth and nail. If it turns I, out it is what you truly want, I do get to tell Merle Street that her husband is fucking behind her back and that is also very good. So what you're saying is this is a total win-win situation <laughs> for me. I think it could be real bad for you, and I need you to understand the gravity of that. <laughs> yeah, I will say, as the rest of the group, this is, there's a very clear lose here, and that's you going over to the dark side and uh, getting into a relationship with a genocidal maniac who's hunted your friends. Uh, also, it seems like there's sort of like a, a drug thing going on there, and it's, it's a dark path. It's a dark path that seems great, and then dark. As a guy who snorts gems every day, let me tell you, once you start <clears throat> popping, you can't get to stopping. <laughs> the Pringles were right. Yeah, if it rhymes, it's true. <laughs> As a bard, I, didn't, I know this. Yes, I know. I, 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 I understand. I'm sorry, Alan. You were going to say something. No, and, no, uh, no. I no. Respond. Respond. No, I'm going on uh, a different direction. Uh, all Just right. Finish your thought. Look, my entire life, I've been plagued with this kind of, you know, 
almost indecision, just kind of going wherever the crime takes me, going, you know, wherever it feels good, whether that was in Neverwinter and having my own kind of bar or uh, being part of a guild or now joining the Vistani and and collecting all these stories and seeing that, and now seeing this straw guy who... I've never known what I wanted. Who is not... Peter Baelish. <laughs> um, and I have to find out. You you look into a puddle and, and see your own reflection staring back. Uh, when will your reflection show who you are inside? Look at me. I will never pass. <laughs> a perfect, um, oh, a perfect daughter. <laughs> Um, Alan, you had uh, a, a different direction you wanted to take things as, as Peter Baelish has a full fucking uh, existential crisis with his reflection. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny because, I mean, I, I think we're all having pretty much the exact same existential crisis as, as not Pete. We're just kind of like going wherever. Like, Quinny, we don't have a plan. Like, wh- yeah, we do. when are you going to be of- king of a car? What happens if we're like, just like keep going on the way we're going on for the next like 10 years? Someone's gonna step in and fill that power vacuum. Yeah, that's true. But I mean- How, how, how long have you been a king they're not aware of? Uh, like a month, maybe less than a month. Uh, oh man, also- that vacuum. That vacuum would have lasted about two hours. Uh, there's a whole army there now. Yeah, I'll also the point good out- news is the last king also never really officially claimed the throne, so it's kind of a, a fun surprise for whoever's sitting on that chair. Well, you guys know who's sitting on that chair because you picked up the transmission from uh, uh, Emily and Grace and Typhus. So, like, you're fully aware of who's there. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss, plus her boss. Um, yeah, that's that's what I've been trying to remind you of, Quinny. There's actually, the, the queen is alive, which just makes you a pretender to the throne. Which means if you tell people you're the king, it's just making it more dangerous for all of us. You could just be Quinny Brownbarrow, that guy who's too famous to be a smart thief. Well, I mean, that's the thing, too, is, like, your name is... You're a tingler. Yeah. And that's that's going to cause problems for us, too. So I definitely, like, I, I see you as you see me. So I, I get that. Um, okay, so let's both change our names. Oh, my name means nothing. Uh, out that way, a car. Uh, Perfect. So you, yeah. you don't mind if we just change your name to something completely different? Cause no, it's I like too my famous. name. It just doesn't matter to other people. It doesn't? Because it feels like there's a giant award named after your name that's very famous throughout all of the criminal community in the world. Yeah, that's but Quinny's kind point. of a common name. <laughs> yeah, what if we just changed your name to, like, Stephen Baldwin? What if we just did that? See, that's actually the reason why, is because you look ex- very similar to the guy who also foisted names upon me, and it's it's there's a little bit of trauma behind that, and well, I I'm really we, don't like it. You could choose the name, but maybe you should change it's, it. I'll change mine. I'll be uh, Raymond Darkbane. <laughs> I like Quinny Brownbarrow. And I feel, I feel like this is another a great example that Alan brought up of us getting kind of distracted. There's kind of more important stuff going on than what my name is. When will my <laughs> reflection show? I mean, I think we're starting to kind of get to the root of our problems here. Like, I don't know about you, Quinny. I felt like kind of lost since I came back here. And it's yeah. like just kind of going along for the ride. But just like, I'm so done with that. So what do you want, Alan? I haven't asked you that. I want the powerful people who do shitty stuff not to be in power anymore. Across the board? Across the fucking board. You want to start here in Barovia? Yeah. You want to find the three artifacts needed to to topple that Dark Lord? Yeah. You want to follow these two people who are our lead to the Sun Scythe? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. All right. And Quinny's just like, <laughs> presto magico, let's go. <laughs> presto um, magico, let's go, go. <laughs> yeah. If it rhymes, mm-hmm. it must be true. Um, cool. So with kind of a new sense of purpose, um, and uh, Ryan, I need to ask, uh, oh, 
Jesus Christ. I need to ask for clarity as the DM. Are you now going by Raymond Darkbane, or are you still Reginald Tingler? I'm still Reginald Tingler. If he's not changing his goddamn name for the benefit of the group, <laughs> fuck him. I'm who I want to be. It doesn't matter here in Barovia. We'll, we'll discuss it again outside in the, in the real, real world. The place that you can get to by just following roads and maps. Sure, because if we defeat the evil magic, it'll make this part of the world. That won't bite us in the ass later. Yeah, my father knows who you are, Quinny, so, you know, we're going to have to. Also, in case nobody else knows, I want a bunch of magic items so I won't die. Thanks for asking. (laughs) Well, I mean, I knew that. Um, Wicked. So, um, Reginald, you... Uh, you stomp over to where not Pete is is staring into uh, the the uh, like the the puddle of of existential woe, um, and you stare into it as well, um, kind of a little bit more petulantly. But it is true they really like they've all seemed to have forgotten that you're like from a, another dimension that's hell, and you don't really have a purpose here. But also, you would likely just die there and. When, when will you know what your reflection is? Um, so yeah. you stare into the, the puddle, um, and staring back is um, your face, but uh, withered and aged. Uh, you have a, a long, barely red beard, um, deep, deep, deep wrinkles, um, no no smile lines, just frown lines. Uh, your hair is, is long and bedraggled, um, and uh, you, you have uh, only two teeth left. Um, and, uh, this, this wizened visage, uh, just stares back at you, um, in, in pity and in, in horror. Wait, not, are you dead? Uh, it, it's just, just reflecting you. Yep. <laughs> Damn it. And he's like, what? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Uh, and then, <laughs> like, sh- like splash the puddle so it goes away. T- hopefully, and then pick uh, Peter Bailey. Not Pete. Up. You were so close. You were so fucking close to knowing what was inside. Uh, but now the puddle's been splashed, mm-hmm. and Nirvana's we're lost that, to you. You were on that third fucking verse, third yep. chorus. It was it was wrapping now, up. Now, admittedly, and- <laughs> Mulan did still have to go on and defeat the Huns um, with several more songs uh, before before she realized that she just needed to be herself. But not Pete. She you were just still in phase business, one. Guys. Yeah, I, I mean, so- let's not go down that road because we will sing the whole thing and we will get sued. <laughs> no, sorry. Um, we're, yeah, I mean, so- I'm pretty sure Hamilton and Mulan are coming for us now. <laughs> so if we can just hit the Reginald other Disney will- releases that are going to hit the theaters when this is all done that'd be great uh <laughs> ryan anyway <laughs> reginald will rest both hands on not peter baelish's shoulders uh and look him in the eye and just say as you know we're more alike than you think i understand the battle that you're having right now and i might be able to help you if we can soften zod up enough physically then i have a spell that can make people bloat uncontrollably so i can make him incredibly ugly and you can find out if you care about zod for who zod is or just for how zod looks and then after we've softened him up and i've made him ugly you can decide if you want to make him hard again i believe in you why are you calling him zod (laughs) i can't remember names it's a tingler trait Zod von Stradovich. Not yeah, that Pete, sounds good. Not Pete considers. Is his this. name not Zod? His name is Strad von oh. Zarovich. Oh yeah, Quiddy, I you know I can make people blow. This is fine. I don't mind that you overlook. Do I know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it uh, when we a, I did it when we fought that uh, that uh, dickhead uh, paladin you, uh, that we all uh, killed. Yeah. So uh, not Pete just like thinks about this um, and it's like, you know. I think that's a, I think that's a good plan. It'll be, I think it'll be worthwhile to find out who he is <laughs> inside. Uh, and that is when the screaming child runs across the road. Um, you're broken from your reverie by um, a, uh, a, a, a small cherubic boy wearing lederhosen um, just booking it uh, across uh, the, the road, uh, just yelling, uh, no, I, I'm all good for today. Thank you. Thank you. No more pies. Um, and he, he starts like sprinting through the woods. The hell was that? 
Was that kid running from pies? This place is all upside down and backwards, man. <laughs> So uh, I'm not fast. Know, Quinny, are you going to catch him, or are we just going to let this ride? Yeah, uh, I, just a kid. Uh, I, I think the reaction was everyone stands around looking shocked. Uh, the <laughs> yeah, kid has escaped. The kid yeah. is gone. Um, <laughs> where was well, the I'm kid a running? Good tracker. Running yeah. From. Um, uh, so kind of uh, from sort of northwest of your location, running southeast. Um, so uh, Isabel turns around and is like. Hey, uh, I'm not crazy. A scared child just ran through here screaming about pies, right? Yeah, yeah. That's no, okay, that's sure fucked did. up. Uh, and his mark is like for you guys who have been here. For yeah, a while? yeah, that's fucking. It's a kid screaming about pies. Pies are delicious. I know. Uh, so and his mark's like says like death woods. Uh, look, we we just we we need to get Isabella out of here. And like she's giving him the fucking like, okay, dude, like, calm your roll. I'm fine. But he's like, we, we, we must get her to safety. Uh, we, we should go. Well, all right. Uh, uh, can uh, any of us hear anything like either like chasing the child or to where the kid is going or? Um, we you hear don't hear sound any of sentient pies. You don't hear anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the greatest <laughs> of all horrors. Um, you don't hear uh, any active pursuit, um, but you can ascertain, um, you can actually see like the, the path kind of curves up ahead and it does seem to be curving uh, northwest. So if you continue down this road, you will likely see um, where the child was likely fleeing from. Okay. Well, I say we go in the direction where the child was running from, if only to prove we are braver than a scared child. I mean, maybe that's part of me finding myself. Yep, stupid reason. <laughs> Let's second draft. Uh, uh, what if we don't go where the child came from because maybe that child's really smart and we should all be afraid? You haven't met a smart child. I've met two. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fucking fantastic answer. Yeah. You ever seen a man say goodbye to a shoe? Yes, yes once. once. <laughs> Um, Ismark and Isabella, you've buried your dad. Are you going to Valakai now? Um, Ismark is like, it's the only way Isabella will be safe. And she's like, dude, I fucking really need you to stop saying shit like that. Um, yes, uh, I think we should go to Valakai, uh, but only so that we can plan our next move. And you um, said no one in Barovia would be able to read the cards properly. So outside of Barovia... A.K.A. Valakai would be a good place to look for someone like that? Uh, I would assume. I mean, uh, Strahd's influence is, is so strong on, on the people of Barovia. They gave up hope long ago. And his mark's like, no, no, no. They just need some inspiration. She's like, no, fuck that. Our dad tried to inspire those assholes for years. And they've just given up. They've straight up surrendered to Strahd. And we can't afford that. I, I'm so sorry. I know you kind of want to fuck him. And again, I, I get it. Like, we're kind of on the same page. Yeah. Uh, but also, like, uh, I'm also kind of worried that he's just trying to turn me into a vampire bride or some shit. Right. Um, so, uh, you, you do know. seem to have a lot more self-respect than, like, I do. So, like, I get it. <laughs> That's fine. I mean, look, I, I get it, though. I kind of hate this. And she points to the holes in her neck. She's like, but... Ah, what can uh, I say? Right, yeah, right, yeah. right. You get it. You get it. Uh, honestly, um, yeah. But all I'm saying is, like, he he seems to to like respect you for your brain at least. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just look like someone that he used to know. Uh, if I can quote the great prophet Gautier. Um, <laughs> Wait, uh, are all evil things on Team Strahd once you get out of Barovia, or are they like independents? Ismark is like, I'm just pretty sure everything's out to get us. Did you see if, the uh, screaming yeah. child? I don't know if anyone That's in Barovia given, has left Barovia. I will say I'm stronger mm. than a child. Uh, I know yeah. that from the child vampire war. Is that child <laughs> running from a general um, uh, Valakai direction? Um, I mean, uh, you the road you're traveling will eventually take you to Valakai. Yeah. Uh, the child was not running from Valakai necessarily. Then I will look to not Peter Baelish and, and say, we're going to have to hit up the child's pie situation, I think, after we've collected some artifacts that we can use to topple the Dark Lord of this cursed country. I mean, I can't, I can't argue with that kind of logic. And, and, and I want to be clear, not Pete, I, I, I wasn't calling you stupid. I was just, like, caught up in the fact that it was a stupid idea that you presented. Yeah, you weren't stupid. It was a stupid idea I you just, had. I just want to be clear. Your ideas are stupid. I, I'm concerned about your self-respect now. 
No, that's cool. Thank, thank you. All right. No, thank you. Thank you both. We're, we're cool, and right? As, as the party starts to like mount up and, and, and move, uh, Isabella just kind of drops back through the ranks. Uh, and she just leans over to, to not Pete. And she's like, I mean, I kind of want to topple him into bed, though. Am I right? <laughs> you're like, you're not wrong. Like, you're totally yeah, right. not wrong. I know. I, like, I, know I know I shouldn't, but God like, damn know, it. But that's part of what makes it so attractive, right? I know, it's right? Just, He's got that, like, not... like, I know I should marry Cyclops, but, like, I want to fuck Wolverine, you know? I know literally exactly what right? I mean. Oh, I'm going to tell you about that time I was, I was at Xavier School. <laughs> uh, and so the two of you just kind of, like, um... Uh, occasionally breaking out into like, yes, truly, we will need steaks and garlic. Yeah, but, but like seriously though, like I just feel like he could do things. So it's and like I think everyone's kind of vaguely aware of it, but just kind of letting it happen. Ismark is like inconsolably marching at the front like a fucking weird little boy scout. Um, and uh, you continue down the path. Um, it is true there is something about night here in uh, Barovia that's just, and I mean, it's the village of Barovia. I'm just going to keep calling the region Barovia because for just ease of, of uh, my own brain. Um, but night feels fucking uncomfortable here. There is just that constant sense of, if it was like a, a, uh, a Hans Zimmer score, like there would just be that constant, like tiny spooky violin under everything uh, that he used on like Dark Knight and Inception on basically everything else where it's just like you can't quite relax there's just a little bit of rut row uh, going on constantly um, under like a yeah of course like naturally come on um, and then uh, you round a corner and uh, you see a, a uh, Charlie Brown therapy stand um, so just like a wooden, a shitty wooden stand. Um, and, uh, behind it is, um, think like Aunt Petunia from Harry Potter. Uh, that mm-hmm. actress whose name I can never remember who, uh, weirdly, I think we, Horse Laura, you referenced McGee. her in the other, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 thank you. I know all the McGee's. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it's her. So she's, uh, she's just like sitting, um, at, a, a small stand, um, and uh, it just says, um, like, uh, pies in, like, bubble font. Uh, like, an aggressive bubble font. Um, and uh, she is sitting there um, doing a Sudoku um, at a, a table with just a bunch of pies. And the second these pies, like, the smell hits you. And it is just fucking rapturous. Nothing, I mean, like, not Pete has got a more rapturous experience since he arrived here. But, like... For the rest of you, this is, it's as though you haven't eaten in days. It's just such a fucking spectacular smell. Um, and uh, she's just sitting there, just just working away at a Sudoku. Um, in the distance, uh, you can see the, the forest kind of gives way um, to um, rolling hills. Um, and, uh, and again, sort of the same sort of seismic um, gaps uh, here and there. Um, but you can see uh, just, a, just a large... Um, vaguely ornate windmill um, that's a little tattered, but um, looks like at one point it was quite beautiful, just kind of lazily turning uh, in the distance. And uh, as you approach, she just says, Oh, hello. Um, uh, hail and well met. I believe that's, is that what you're supposed to say uh, to, to, to an adventuring party? <laughs> How much for a pie? Oh, um, <laughs> How much for two? <laughs> Um, and, uh, she's like, uh, well, uh, oh, oh, a uh, big spender, I see. Um, they're, uh, they're, they are merely, uh, well, um, we're running a special offer right now. Uh, the first one is only one copper piece. Uh, we only deal in gold in this game, so I'm just going to say one gold, but understand oh it's supposed one to be gold piece. <laughs> um, yeah, so just add one gold piece. Tom uh, Reginald would like to subtly touch the stand and use his grim psychometry because he does not trust a good thing a child is afraid of to see if he can find any dark past surrounding these He does not trust a good thing a child thing. is afraid of. May I just <laughs> repeat that phrase? Like, I know a lot of people put, like, live, laugh, love uh, on a piece of wood somewhere <laughs> yeah. in their house. That's yep. what I want. I just yep. want that on a plaque uh, or on a T-shirt uh, looking at you. Fans of the show. Um, <laughs> Don't trust so, a good thing a child is afraid of. 
so um, you just subtly uh, touch the stand, and uh, Ryan, again, I'm sorry, you already told me this, but you know, running a campaign and such. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I roll, what are the effects? I roll on this? a history check with advantage, and then mm-hmm. how it works is um, you recall. Uh, information about dark objects you are touching or dark places you are present in. The information found focuses on the darker aspects of the history and can convey images or history the character wasn't previously aware of on higher rolls. Cool. Roll them bones. Oh yeah, that is a 26. Oh, uh, baby! Nice. Um, so at first um, you see to like the psycho soundtrack just a fucking horrific act of a tree being chopped down and then broken up into smaller stakes and pieces of wood <laughs> that are then assembled into a stand. <laughs> That's what you can get from from the pie stand. I don't like it. <laughs> he says to himself. <laughs> Uh, and then he'd like to do an arcana check to see if he could recognize anything in the pies. It's a weird thing, but he knows a shitload about poisons from his background and, mm-hmm. and also weird poisonous magic. Go for it. That is a 19 for an arcana check. Um, nothing inherently magical is coming off of the pies. Uh, that said, what you would know from your um, sort of history with poisons and exotic uh, things of that ilk is... There's a difference between enchanting something and uh, the kind of mechanical act of baking something into a thing. Um, So, for instance, if um, the pies were magically enchanted to do something, uh, you'd be able to feel it. But um, you do get... uh, You get kind of the... uh, Like a vague Peter Parker Spidey sense off these things. There's something off about them. Um, But uh, if there is magic... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Um, if they are magic, it's something that is literally baked into it. Not, um, it's not, sorry, I'm not being very clear about this. There's a difference between here's an object, I have put a spell on it, and here's an object that is built of spell. Um, it has a vague sense of that, mm-hmm. but they, they don't feel illusionary. They don't feel enchanted per se, but you are getting kind of a magical sense off them. Like yeah, this so is enough the, to uh... make you uncomfortable. Yeah, so, uh, what's the weird trap in your pies that are too cheap? <laughs> um, can you roll me a persuasion check, I guess? <laughs> so that's, a, that's a nine. I'm right, right down the middle of the barrel on that one. Um, so, um, she, uh, smiles in the way that only a dowdy, uh, sort of, uh, middle-aged British woman can, according to all the shows I've watched. Um, and, uh, just says, uh, well, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, dear, you may not be from around here, but one gold piece is, is a small fortune around these parts. Uh, yes, uh, one strad is worth quite a bit. Oh, they're called strads here? Well, yes, his, his face is on them. What else would you call them? I'm not... I think I've got, like, one straw on me. Oh! Right here, all right. A uh, rich man! Well, yeah, put your hand out and I'll pay you for the pie. Um, and uh, she extends a hand. I press my medallion of thought into her palm and cast it to know what she's thinking. Hey! <laughs> nice! <laughs> Um, you just hear like, what a bunch of fucking country rubes. One whole straw for the pies. <laughs> well, it's as we always say, we three. First hits free. Uh, Wait, why am I hearing myself so clearly? And then like my this other straw hand comes is down to very like, strange her, looking. Older forearm, and now I'm uh, spending the charge to probe deeper, which requires a save on her part. All right. Uh, what's the DC a on this save. human commoner? A wisdom <laughs> save. Um, it doesn't list the DC on the medallion. Of what's thought. your spellcasting DC, brother? Mine is 15. All right, and that is what it is. Uh, she fails. Okay. Which is weird because she's actually got a pretty decent score on that, but not good enough. <laughs> so I gain a deeper insight into her 
her reasoning um, and emotional state. And she is aware that I am doing this now. <laughs> Which I elected to do only when she was like, why do I hear my voice? I was like, well, we're, we're in it. Understandably. Yeah. Um, she's just like, well, I certainly hope he enjoys the pie. Otherwise, we're probably in trouble. Uh, eat the pie. I can feel you inside here. Eat the pie. Everything will be fine if you eat the pie. Doesn't it smell delicious? It will make yes. your dreams come true. Eat the fucking pie. <laughs> and I want to um, pull away with the medallion uh, and having just sleight of handed a regular coin into her hand. <laughs> Okay, I need you to roll uh, sleight of hand, please. Sl- uh, 26. All right, uh, you successfully do it. Um, and uh, Take one gold coin off my. Cat. She like looks down in, in shock and then sees the coin and is like, Oh my, it's been a long day. I, I thought something ill was afoot. But uh, thank you. Here is your pie. And she just like holds it up to your face. And, oh, man. I mean, like, uh, Quinny, you're growing up on a farm. Like, your your folks were like fucking good cooks. Yep. Um, and this pie smells. Was a big part of a, a halfling diet. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> smells better than, than what you've. Uh, oh, it smells is, better? Yeah. It, than what you've you've, that's... you've eaten before. It is it is very fucking good. Oh, that's uh, what are the rest of you doing? Had pumpkin pie, right? Well, this is all yeah. happening. Yes, yeah, so much pumpkin pie. Um, uh, uh, not Pete, Alan, and uh, Reginald. Um, I'm gonna say, what are you doing up to the moment that Quinny sleight of hands the coin? Um, I. So I'm... you each get like one action. Hmm. Is there anything I can do just like inspecting the the pies? Because um, as you had mentioned before, not Pete has already um, felt like a level of like rapturous enchantment that does outweigh like he's still like super into this pie. Like, <laughs> su- like it's just like, yeah, I get it. Like, ah, oh, I get it. <laughs> but has already like kind of resisted something even tougher so is there anything perhaps like um maybe i could roll for uh perception like something that maybe that i've noticed during this interaction that other people haven't um well so i mean this is a big spend for you but uh you do have a one sixth level spell slot uh you could use true seeing <laughs> Oh, I could, yeah. Which is, uh, again, big spend. Um, but given that this seems to be kind of a uh, a big concern, I will say, yeah, you're... Don't do it! <laughs> you're, um, Says Laura the player. Yeah. yeah. Let uh, Quinny eat the damned pie. <laughs> Who gives a not shit? not worth it. Um, He's yeah, got so other characters. This will give you an hour, um, <laughs> and it gives uh, you or someone you touch the ability to see things as they actually are. For the duration, the creature has true sight and notices secret doors hidden by magic and can see into the ethereal plane to a range of 120 feet. So I will say not Pete. Um, like, I love food, but if I was madly in love with uh, the devil, but also so handsome... Um, I would probably also just be distracted enough by that that I'm kind of like, okay, I mean, this is good, but also maybe not. So mm-hmm. I think you're less enraptured with this. Reginald, yeah. you're just like naturally um, suspicious of this, but also your resolve is breaking down. You also learned a long time ago that in the Black Spider's Horde, it was best not to ask what was in the stew because uh, the answers were usually gross. <laughs> um, yeah, I... I feel like Reginald is distrustful of anything that seems like a good deal, which mm-hmm. will bite him in the ass more often than not. But in Barovia, not the worst strategy. So what he's done is, after he chatted and then Quinny went and started doing his business, he just like flipped his warhammer over and leaned on it as a walking stick. But the flaming end is just resting against the front, like mm. left hand corner. Oh, interesting. Of the pie stand so that he can set the stand on fire. <laughs> cool. Um, Alan, uh, can you roll me a? We will save? I can roll a wisdom, wisdom save. Fuck! Fuck! <laughs> you thought so long and hard about it. Mm! I had a 50-50 chance. 
God damn your fourth uh, edition. <laughs> you're like made wisdom so you're like monster. falling up the stairs. Oh god damn it! I hate it so much. It scares me so much every time. All right, yeah, go ahead. Sixteen. Cool, great. Have a point of inspiration for me fucking up. I'm not kidding. You could just have that. Um, wow. Uh, so um, I've already got one. All right, then you can't. Jesus oh, Christ! No, no, fuck off! You already one. have really one. Honest. No, you're good. It's fine. Don't worry about it. He was vulnerable I'm and gonna take it. No, in his you face. know what? Wow. Just wow. I don't think he's Two ever going to recover from that. Yeah. When will my reflection show? When, when I say looking directly into my web camera where I can see myself. Um, all right. Uh, no, uh, Laura, you can keep the point of inspiration. I'm just being petty. Um, so you have two <laughs> points of inspiration now. Um, what uh, What do you think Alan's doing? Because you passed your will save, wisdom save. I don't know the fuck. Uh, you passed your thing that I told you to roll. Um, you're now able to. It's going to haunt me. Um, you're now able to choose kind of where you're at. Now, admittedly, I would ask that you do play it honestly to what you think Alan would be doing. If she yeah. wouldn't be distracted by this, that's also fine. But you're not enraptured by the smell so much that you're you're not um, in control of your actions. I think I'm like a normal amount of wary. So um, I think like I like I normally would and just don't really want to really tell anyone. Um, I kind of have a I have a poison spray ready. Like my kind of my palms are in like the right position to mm -hmm. just like. You got your Witcher um, hand gestures ready? Yeah, exactly. To yeah. just like gas this lady at the first sign of trouble. All right, cool. So at so, least if someone goes down. So there is a, a degree of anything. wariness kind of ready to go. Uh, yeah. Not Pete. Uh, what do you want to do about your magical powers? Yo, I want to, I want to, I want to use that. I want to. <laughs> and are you going to use it on yourself or on Quinny? I'm going to use it on Quinny. Okay. Yeah. It's right. a pie. What is yep. what does this look like? <laughs> um so what I do, like I uh noticing that like uh Quinny has a pie and I'm just like, oh, not Peter Baelish, you must ask act quickly. Uh he says like to himself, <laughs> like full volume. Um <laughs> and um my eyes uh roll back in my head so you just see the whites of my eyes um as i like kind of grow like and i managed to like touch the pie and then touch quinny and creating a circuit between myself <laughs> and quinny and the pie to give the sight um and um you just see um the the bars of of a cage mm. um and all three of you, uh, and the pie, the pie also sees it. <laughs> the pie has become um, sentient. This pie's going on a journey with us. <laughs> Hello, it's me, NPC. Oh my um, god. I'll see myself out. Um, so uh, you see through the bars of a cage, um, uh, three, um, sort of like your, your vision's almost blurring. Uh, and uh, at, at times they just look like um, three extras from a BBC series. Um, and at times uh, these sort of horrific monsters. Um, but every time you blink, it's a bit different. Um, and you just hear, are you sure I can have all this chocolate? And they just keep saying, yes, dearie, it's fine. And then you hear this, this you see like a little hand kind of push through and grab some chocolate and go, oh, nom, 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 nom. Um, and then say, but, but why am I getting so sleepy? Uterco sleepy time. Uh, and then your vision kind of falls to the side and it drifts. And then you just hear the sound of a mortar and pestle grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. Um, and then you just see um, withered skeletal fingers just doing the, uh, the um, salt bay salt. thing. <laughs> Um, down <laughs> off off the elbow, um, and um, the vision kind of uh, blurs as as it looks to um, another one of these creatures that seems to be just weeping blood, uh, and it huh. just says like, "Really, a pinch of water? Perhaps you ought to add some more." And um, Aunt Petunia says, "Yes, you are correct. More water for all of us." and uh, begins to reach into a mortar and pestle for a white powder that she begins to um, just uh, dust the pastry with. Uh, All right. 
uh, Quinny, you you blink back to reality. Smacking you also, that pie away. <laughs> yeah, you also see that the the lady uh, behind it is um, seemingly uh, just like soaked in bog water um, and uh, covered in kind of like seaweed. Um, she has two very prominent fangs, not in a, a vampiric way, but more of like a saber toothed tiger thing going on. Um, uh, her eyes are, are like a, a sickly green. Um, she has no nose. It's just like oozing, uh, mucus. Um, and the Sudoku book is a book called Evil Doku. Um, and, uh, each thing just seems to be a different evil act that you have to find the right combination of to solve. A also, two she's Sudoku? clearly cheating. <laughs> oh, damn, son. Well done. Uh, but yeah, she... she also clearly has an answer guide next to it. Like, pure evil. Oh my god. It was all a game all along. Yeah, I, I knock the pie aside and I stick a finger out at her and accuse her and say, like, I see you. I see what you really are. I see your fangs. I see your eyes. I see everything. Uh, roll dexterity save, please. Do, 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 do. Uh, I rolled low, so I'm going to use my inspiration that Kat was so kind to, to give me. You earned it. Hey, that's better. Uh, 22. Uh, sir, I rolled a 26. <gasps> uh, oh, so she wow. didn't matter. Bites your finger off. Oh. Roll for initiative. This episode of Dum Dums and Dragons features the voices of Ryan LaPlante at the Ryan LaPlante on Twitter, Tyler Hewitt at Tyler underscore Hewitt on Twitter, Laura Elizabeth at El Hamstring on Twitter, our amazing special guest, and our fantastic DM Tom McGee at McGee TD on Twitter. This episode was edited by Ryan LaPlante, and all of Dum Dums and Dice's art is by Decapitated Markers or at Decapitated Marker on Twitter. That's M R K R. Our theme songs are And Now for That Massive Coronary and Skipping Through the Orchestra Pit Part 1 by Peter Gresser. And our ad music is No Control and Cheap. Chiefs by Jazzar, J-A-H-Z-Z-A-R, all available at freemusicarchive.org. When it comes to Dum Dums and Dice, you can visit our website at dumdumdice.com. Our Twitter and Instagram are at dumdumdice, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash dumdumdice. But most importantly, we've got merchandise at redbubble.com slash people slash dumdumdice, or you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. That's D-U-M-B, D-U-M-B, D-I-C-E. Now I'm off to do more magic. See you next episode. Dum Dums and Dice has to give a special thank you to the supreme beings of our Patreon at this time. Christian Manicola, Long Long, The Half-Blind Prophet, James Quayar, DM Rob, Christopher Little, Olin Anderson, Sue One, George Dolby, One True Artistry, Orion Birchfield, Lorda Bradovic, Noel Louis, Anthony Griffin, and Jill and Noel Laplante. If you want your name to be added to this list, you can join our Patreon too at patreon.com slash dumdumdice. Thanks to them, and a little bit of thanks to you.